Hey everybody, Howard here with cool ways to add licks to your chords, okay? Now I kind of consider this a follow-up lesson to my previous one, cool pentatonic tricks that you can add to your playing as well using the major pentatonic scale. But this one focuses a bit more on minor chords and it is imperative for this particular lesson that you have a handle on your basic bar chords, minors and majors. Uh, but don't fret if you don't just yet because I'll be doing some open position stuff included in this as well. And of course I'll be adding some extra things, okay? So basically let me just play the uh, demonstration and then we'll break it all down and talk about how you can do it too, okay? Okay, so first let's take a look at the chords that we're using. Again, these are bar chords and we're using an A minor to a G major to an F major to an E sus4 to an E major. Okay, pretty common style chord progression. And so how this works is first you want to take a look at where the information is coming from. And this is really easy stuff, right? It's just a couple of patterns and of course I always like to throw in a little something extra. So we have that A minor chord, and of course a lot of us know the A minor pentatonic scale, right? Starting with the first string in reverse, we have 8 to 5, 8 to 5 on the B string, 7 to 5 on the G, 7 to 5 on the D, 7 to 5 on the A, and 8 to 5 on the 6th string, the E string. So if we take a look at that A minor chord, and we release our pinky, we can play that scale right underneath the chord or within the chord, however you choose to look at it. Pretty sweet, right? And so once you've got that established, the chord, and then playing the scale within the chord, there's all kinds of cool things you can do. You can use hammer-ons, pull-offs. You can play more than one string at a time, a la Hendrix style. And so many other players, right? So I threw a D minor into the uh, mix here. So let's talk about that. How do you do it off of the fifth string? So if you've got a D minor shape, starting with the fifth string, of course, uh, it's the same idea. You release your pinky and just think of that scale. But as you can see, the shape of the chord itself alters the scale slightly. We don't need to get theoretical about it just yet, but it's the same idea, right? Just. And again, you can do hammer-ons, pull-offs, anything you want to do, okay? So let's move into the major chords off of the uh, sixth string. So we had a G major, okay? Now it's the same idea. You're going to have a scale or scale tones right underneath that chord. But for major chords, it's going to be different, okay? As a note, for minor chords, it's always going to be the same. No matter where you play. All right, that's really nice, just a one pattern basically. So let's talk about that G chord. So for the G chord, uh, the scale shape underneath is going to change. You'll release your pinky just like you did before, but you'll bring it down to the fifth fret on the first string and then release it, sounding the third fret inside the chord. Same thing on the B string, same thing on the G string. And again, the shape of the chord dictates the scale, so to speak. Very sweet sounding. And so that will hold for your major chords. Your major chords played off of the sixth string. So you basically just have those two shapes. This one and this one. And we went to an F chord, so it stays the same. Okay, so that's the basic information and where it comes from, okay? So let's go through it with a fine tooth comb. 
so the idea here is to take what I've done and hopefully make it your own, right? We definitely learn from specific musical examples and that's the reason for this, okay? So I'll show you exactly what I did, but feel free to you know, pick up the tempo, slow it down, put it in a different time signature, whatever you want to do. I'm playing it in basically kind of a three, four bluesy thing. That's kind of what I'm thinking of, right? So let's go through it. We've got that first chord, the A minor, or technically the A minor seventh, and I played this. Okay, so again, we're holding down the chord, and what I'm doing is striking the G string and the B string at the same time and hammering with my pinky up to the seventh fret on the G string. Then release it and pick those two strings again. Then lay your pinky down on the seventh fret on the D string. And that's your first lick. Do the same thing again, but using the D strings, excuse me, using the D string and the G string. The exact same move, right? Hammer up, off, pick it again, and then pick the seventh fret on the A string. So let me do that nice and slow. Then I played the D string and slid from the 7th fret to the 5th fret on the A string. But hang on to the chord as long as you can, right? Because it sounds so good. See that? How I played the within the chord as long as I could sustain the chord, right? And that slides us into position for the G chord. And again, we're now using that major shape. Right? And I played a, a fun little lick here that goes like this. All right, so let me explain that one. We do the uh, three notes at the gate, just like we did on the A minor chord. And then bring your pinky down so that you can hammer on to the G string at the fifth fret. That's a cool little move and it sounds kind of nice. And I follow that hammer on with the B string to the first E string and back to the B string. Okay, and keeping your pinky on the fifth fret, I then play the G string and the B string together. Take the pinky off, pick them again bring the pinky right back to the uh, D string at the fifth fret. So we have kind of nice sounding. And then we move to the F chord and again because it's a major chord we'll be using that same that same scale shape underneath it, okay? And this one's pretty easy. This is just really working the hammer-ons. Right across the strings, right? So you've got those three notes out the gate again. And then once again, bring that pinky down so you can do a hammer-on. So I'm hammering to the third fret, of course, on the G string now, but playing the G and the B strings at the same time. Then move your finger down, your pinky to the third fret on the B string and engage with the uh, B string and the E string this time. And then staying with those two strings, finally bring your pinky down to the uh, first string. So you get this. So we have. an E7 sus or E7 sus4 and then I played a little string of double stops here which resolves it to an E major chord okay as a note I'll be doing an extensive tutorial on double stops exactly what they are 
where they come from and how to easily use them in your playing, okay? But for now, you can just keep this in your back pocket. If you've got an E major chord, that's always gonna sound great, okay? So I'm doing a hammer on, right? Hammer on on the G string to the first fret and then open E string. And I think down up, down up is best for this. Another hammer on and then a slide. And then I'm going back to the A minor 7th chord again, but this time I'm using an open A string, okay, instead of playing the full bar chord, and it does give it a little bit different sound. And then from there, I simply walked through the scale, I'm not kidding, just... So we sweep across the chord, and then simply walk right through the scale. using two strings at a time to bring out more of the chord, okay? So for the uh, first four notes, I'm using the E string, the first string, and the B string, the second string. Then moving to the uh, seventh fret on the G string, I'm using the G string and the B string together. And then when I move to the seventh fret on the D string, I bring in the uh, D string and the G string together. And then finally, so we have, right? And then I went to a D minor chord, or what is essentially a D minor seven. And this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. It's a D minor seven chord or a D minor chord off of the fifth string. And you just think about that same scale shape. And again, the chord will dictate the differentiation between the scales. So what I did there is the same idea, just three notes out the gate. And then using the B string and the E string together, I did a hammer on to the eighth fret on the B string. And then of course back. So we have. So backing up a bit to that A minor seven, And then we have an E7 sharp 9, and I'm playing this with an open E string right across the uh, D, the G, and the B string. So that's the 6th fret on the D string, 7 on G, and 8 on B, and just let that open E string, the 6th string, ring through. Okay, so we have... And then I'm using uh, simple open position type chords uh, to do the same thing, you know, create these lines within the chord. Uh, so I played, okay, as a note, that is the exact same scale, right? Just playing it within an open A minor seventh chord. Uh, you can see this on the tab pretty easily. Again, it's a combination of two strings at a time. There's no hammer-ons or anything like that here, but uh, let me play it nice and slow. And then in place of the G major bar chord, I played this. Okay, so again, it's just using the same scale tones that you would use over the bar chord, but in open position. So let me play that for you slow as well. A little double stop at the end there. And again, I'll be doing a uh, complete tutorial on double stops, okay? So let's put those two together. sounding. And then when I moved to the F chord, I played exactly what I did previously on that G major bar chord. 
exact same move, just a whole step down. And then the E7 sus to an E7. Second fret on the A string, first fret on the G string. And then I closed it out with this. I hit an open A string. And this is a cool little trick uh, that you can keep in your back pocket as well, okay? If you have a minor chord, like in this case an A minor, or an A minor 7, you can always play this. Okay? And you can see that on the tab. That always sounds wonderful, and if you look at it uh, position-wise, this is the way to find it. So what I played was into an open position A minor 7 chord, all right? So there you go with a cool way to add uh, licks to your uh, chords, and uh, I hope you really enjoyed it. And uh, I know a lot of people ask me how they can help support the channel. Uh, simply become a member for like a penny less than five bucks a month. <laughs> you can uh, be a member of the channel, and it really does help support it, okay? Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff in the description box below, some more acoustic guitar lessons, my blues rock course, all of that stuff, okay? And uh, people ask me about the guitar. It's a Fender Paramount. You can see that in the uh, little box down in the left-hand corner, the gear box, I like to call it. Um, and uh, the strings are Diodarios, okay? I use 12 through 53, okay? So it's uh, considered a light gauge, but it's heavy enough that you still get a pretty good sound out of it, okay? All right, we'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs> See you in the next video. Bye.